What did Jarvis just say? At 8.04 a.m. in the living underscore room I said, The back door is open. The air quality in this house has actually improved. Yep, let's automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. For those of you that have been part of the Slacker Labs journey, you'll know that my Home Assistant's alter ego Jarvis is a big part of my smart home. I even built my own room presence sensor that leverages motion sensors, ESP presence nodes, and a few other devices to try to determine which room people are in and route the notifications to that room. But it's not a perfect system, and sometimes messages play in the wrong room. And since I try to avoid using dashboards to interact with Home Assistant in this house, I developed my own solution for asking my voice assistants to repeat the last thing that Jarvis said. So in this video, I want to walk you through how I set that system up. For reference, all the YAML and configuration options I use in this solution will be in a GitHub repo, and I'll link to it in the description of this video in case you want to grab that code. Because my use case for this solution involves text-to-speech notifications, I'll be including some of my text-to-speech scripts in this repo as well. And while I won't be talking about how I built Jarvis in this video, I will include some links to the previous videos where I discuss that in detail. I have been working on simplifying that setup quite a bit, and I hope to be able to share that with you soon. And while that version isn't ready to share yet, the simplified speech engine script I've included with this repo does use the simpler method, which I hope avoids some confusion and makes it easier for you to drop it into your smart home configuration. Anyway, this solution is about saving some data that we want to recall and use later. Depending on the type of data you want to save in Home Assistant to use later, you might be able to get away with a helper and avoid using MQTT. But since some of my text-to-speech notifications are quite long, MQTT allows me to store a pretty large blob of text. Although even MQTT has some limitations in terms of the length of data. For example, anytime I've tried to store anything over 255 characters in a topic, I get an error. But we're also going to talk about how I get around that limitation. In any case, it all starts with my speech engine script. Before we take a look at all of this, I just want to point out that I've included code for this in a couple of different ways. First, there's a notifications.yaml package that you could take and just drop into your Home Assistant configuration if you're using packages. But if you're not, I'll also add the config to the appropriate place in the different files. So the scripts will be in the script.yaml file and the rest is in the configuration.yaml. Bottom line is just pick one method, either grab the package or copy the part you want out of the other YAML files. Okay, let's start in the notifications.yaml file where I have a simplified version of the speech engine script I use, but it should give you a good foundation for any text-to-speech notification system you want to set up. This script was built to be modular because I want to try to reduce repeated actions. I don't like having to call the same service in multiple automations and pass the same data, so I use scripts like a function. So when I call this simplified speech engine script in an automation, I can simply pass it a message, a who parameter that represents where this message should play, and if needed, a message summary. The message summary isn't really needed, but we're going to talk about that more in detail in a little bit. The alternative is you could put the contents of this speech engine script in every automation where you want to have a text-to-speech notification. But like I said, that gets a bit crazy and it's really hard to maintain if you want to update how that works because then you have to go and touch every one of those automations. If you want to use this script in your smart home, you'll need to update it for your system. So let's walk through what we have. At the top here are some conditions. In this, they're currently commented out, but you could easily change them to match your smart home. For me, I use conditions to determine if I want this message to actually be made so I don't have the house talking all night while we're trying to sleep. You'll also need to update the service call for your text-to-speech service. I prefer Amazon Polly because I think it sounds the best, but any text-to-speech service would work here. Just replace this service call with the one that you want, and in place of the text you want to turn into speech, put this Jinja here that will use whatever we've passed in the message parameter. And if you don't care about being able to recall these messages later, you could stop right here. 
Everything else in this script is for saving the data needed for the recall system. And you'll need to update these with where you want to store your data. If you want to use MQTT and you've already got MQTT set up on your system, you just need to update your topics. If you don't already have MQTT set up, you're going to want to do that first. And I'll link to a video in the description where I walk you through that process. If you decide you want to use a helper like a text input, you'll just need to replace all of these MQTT publish actions with the service calls for updating your helper. MQTT is simply a way to move information around, which can come in handy when you've built a smart home on a lot of disparate services. Because the beauty of MQTT is a lot of services out there can send data to an MQTT broker. So you or another service could publish data to an MQTT topic, and then inside of Home Assistant, you just have to build a sensor that reads the data from that topic. And then you can leverage it in a Lovelace dashboard or as context in an automation, which makes it a pretty handy service to have inside your Home Assistant smart home. And in this case, we're going to use it to save our text-to-speech notifications so we can recall them later. Anytime you need to publish or save data inside of Home Assistant, just call the MQTT Publish service. We set the topic we want to use, and then the payload contains whatever we want to save to that topic. For example, if we want to save a string, we could call the MQTT Publish service, set our topic to something like notifications slash messages slash mantra. For topics, I tend to structure them like this, domain slash service slash attribute. But the topic could be whatever you want. And for the payload, use a string like automate the boring stuff. I also like to set the retain attribute to true so that MQTT keeps that value in that topic until it's changed, especially for things like data I want to save to use later. Then when we run this action as part of an automation or script, that string will be saved to our topic. Or in this case, we could have our speech engine script use a template and make that data be based on something in our smart home. Like this one, where I store the value of the who parameter. Topic in this case is house slash poly slash last LOC for last location. I've hard coded this topic in these service calls, but you could absolutely use a template here as well if you had a situation in which your topic may change based on some context in your automation, allowing you to make this even more modular. And for payload, we use Jinja to refer to the who parameter. I also have one for saving the message time. Topic follows the same pattern here, house slash poly slash MSG time. And then we use some Jinja to get the current time in 12 hour format. So this outputs it like hours, colon, minutes, and then either AM or PM. And finally, one that stores the actual message. Topic here is house slash poly slash last MSG. But this payload is a little more complicated since we need to make sure that it can handle a couple of different situations. Since I used the same script to play back the previous message, I've included some logic to ensure that if it's called because we're playing a previous message, we don't actually save it again with all that extra information. We just use the previous value. So if message summary equals recall, then we set the message summary variable to the value of whatever our previous message was. And if it's not recall, then we just move on to the next part which is to check to see if message summary actually exists, because I don't always pass message summary to this script. I just use message summary as a way to avoid storing long briefings or other data that I don't really need to be repeated like the daily briefing. I'll show you how I use that in just a bit. For now, just know that if it exists, then we set the message variable to the value of message summary. This may seem like an unneeded step, but I do this to avoid having to do more decision logic later. That way, if message summary wasn't provided, then we just use what's in message. And if it was provided, then we overwrite what was in message with whatever is in that message summary. But since that message might have lots of space or even special characters in it, I use a macro to clean whatever is stored in that message variable. A macro is just like a mini function inside this action. And to be honest, it really doesn't need to happen in this setup because it's not going to get called from outside this automation. I went over this particular macro in a previous video on Jarvis. This one is called cleanup, and all it does is take the message we pass it and remove any of the extra space just to make it a little more compact and easier to save for future reference. First, this little bit here is just giving the macro a name, in this case, cleanup. The name should always have a open and closed parentheses following it. And if you want to pass something to a macro, you need to put a variable in here that will store whatever you pass to it. 
In this case, I called it data. So when we call cleanup and pass something to it, like we do here at the bottom, we can refer to that as data inside the macro. This macro simply cleans our message and makes it more compact. In the future version, I'm going to get rid of this extra code, but it does work, and so I just left it here. But all of this does is define the macro. We need a step in which we actually pass the contents of our message to that macro, and we do that here. And the end result of all of this is that it spits out a nice clean version of our message that can be used by our text-to-speech integration. Okay, that's a lot of stuff, but what we have now is a script that takes a who parameter, which is the location we want to play a message, and the message itself. That script can also check to make sure the conditions are right to play that message, and then play the message. And when it's done, it can save the contents of that message to an MQTT topic so that we can use it later. So let's put it into action. Okay, first we need to define some sensors that can grab that data. And depending on when you watch this video, the method for doing that is going to be different. If you're running a Home Assistant version prior to 2022.6, you can do this anywhere you have a sensor colon heading. For example, you could add this to a package like this or in your configuration.yaml, the platform will be MQTT. Name will be how we want to refer to the sensor and state topic is the location of that data. As you can see here, I have the three topics I reference in my speech engine script. To see this inside of Home Assistant, you'll need to restart Home Assistant or head to Developer Tools, then YAML, then click on MQTT Entities to reload any manual MQTT defined entities. And what you end up with are three sensors that have values of those topics as their state. You also get a last updated and a last changed timestamp that can be used to determine when those sensors were last modified. And now that we have our script and sensors defined, every time we call our speech engine script, we'll save some data and we can use those sensors to return that data to us. If you're running Home Assistant version 2022.6 or later, then you'll need to set up your MQTT sensors like this. Instead of the sensor colon, we're going to use MQTT colon, then sensor colon to indicate that what follows will be sensors. Then for each sensor, we have a name and a state topic. Next up is the voice command part. I often refer to the voice of my smart home as Jarvis. And while I have big dreams about what Jarvis will become one day, I don't think Home Assistant is quite there yet for local-only text-to-speech. There are local-only text-to-speech options out there. And if your priority is local-only, then you will definitely be able to get this done inside of Home Assistant. But since I don't mind using cloud services inside of my smart home, I let the other platforms do the heavy lifting in terms of the voice interaction. And in this house, that means the Amazon Echo or a Google Home. So anytime I need a voice command with Home Assistant, I leverage one of these platforms. My typical pattern is writing a script that has Home Assistant do some actions, or in this use case, verbalize some text. And then I use the Amazon Echo or the Google Home simply as a trigger to trigger that script using a voice command. So the first step is setting up a script that can handle playing the recall message. And it looks like this. It's super basic, but this is how I leveraged that speech engine script in my setup. I named this script play last message. And if you're writing this in YAML, don't forget to add that sequence line. Then this script has a single service call. We call our simplified speech engine. Under data, we need to supply it those parameters we talked about. Who, which in my case is the speaker or room I want this message to play. I'm using my room presence sensor, which will help ensure this gets played back in the room that I'm in. But you could point this to a specific speaker. If you want to know more about my room presence sensor, I'll leave a link in the description to the last video where I talk about that. And message, which is the actual text we want to turn into speech. Here I have a string with the output of those MQTT sensors sprinkled in. So we end up with a message like the one you heard in the intro. And then here is where I add that message summary field and set it to recall so that my speech engine script knows not to save this message. Once you have this defined, be sure to restart or use your YAML menu under developer tools to reload your scripts. Next, we need to flip over to the Amazon Echo or the Google Home and build a routine. Here you can create a voice trigger of your choosing like what did Jarvis say or what was the last thing Jarvis said? Then for action, we browse smart home, we click scenes, and we find our play last message script. If you don't see it here, you may need to force your Echo to discover devices to see it. 
or force a sync if you're using the Nabucasa platform. But once all of this is done, we can now use our voice to trigger a recall of our last text-to-speech notification. Like I said, I use that message summary from time to time to summarize some of my bigger notifications. For example, my morning briefing can get a bit wordy. So for that morning briefing notification, I simply set the message summary to morning briefing because that one is almost always over the 255 character limit of the MQTT topic in my setup. And I don't need a way to save the output from that daily briefing because I have another way of triggering the daily briefing anytime I want to get an update. But for any of the notifications that are done in the moment, like a notification that guests arrive or a rundown of what's in the mailbox, I leave off that message summary and let it store the contents of the notification. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you're using text-to-speech notifications in your setup, you might consider adding a system like this in your smart home to improve the user experience. I'll be doing a future video on actionable notifications with the Amazon Echo, and this would make a pretty good use case for prompting a user in another room to ask if they want to hear the message again since it appears they weren't in the room where the message played. And I'm sure you'll have other ideas on how to leverage a system like this, so be sure to drop those in the comments. If you want to help Slacker Labs and the mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can find links to the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store, as well as affiliate links and even a link to buy me a coffee if you so choose in the description of this video. Or just let me know that you found value in this video by hitting that like button and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, Go automate the boring stuff.